I don't think I ever questioned my chosen profession. I was always kind of a solitary kid. Um, I had always one or two good friends, but I was never like the popular kid. I was actually very shy as a kid. So I think my, my temperament was suited to being a photographer. I'm kind of a lone wolf underneath it all. I'm very social, but then I also really need to be alone and I'm, I'm too good at being alone. It's hard to articulate the drive that I think I had and that I know a lot of my colleagues have in terms of, as I call it, pushing one's edges. When, I can't speak for anybody else, but when I made the decision and the commitment to become a photojournalist um, and tell difficult stories, um, I, it was part of your job. When I started with the LA Times, we were still shooting black and white film and we would rush back in from an assignment jump into the processing room, you know, soup our film, jump, you know, throw it in the dryer, then jump into a dark room, make prints, run it out to the, you know, the photo editor's desk. I mean, it was thrilling. I mean, it was just so much fun. Being a young female photographer 30, 35 years ago, um, it was definitely a very male-dominated profession. And I wasn't taken seriously initially. And um, I felt like I had to prove myself to be three times as good as the guys. There were a few staff, male staff photographers who gave me a hard time relentlessly, relentlessly. Just, I didn't let it deter me, but it was, you know, it was exhausting. And I think that the biggest detriment is, was also kind of physical strength. Um, I couldn't, you can't do as much or lift as much, although I tried, I was always physically very strong. But once I'm looking through the viewfinder, it's, it's very transcendent for me. Photographers have died taking pictures because they get so in their head and in the camera and what they're seeing, they forget that they actually have a body attached. But you had this kind of, <laughs> I don't know, it's strange. It's almost like this sense of invincibility. Like you have such a, a mission to accomplish that you nothing's gonna happen to you. Maybe we just willed ourselves not to get hurt, although as we know, a lot of journalists get killed. And also now with the internet, everybody's seeing everything that everybody is doing instantaneously. So if they don't like the message, well, kill the messenger. You just have to be careful and, uh, and, and hope that your guardian angel is uh, working overtime. My mom really liked it when I shot society parties and Hollywood pictures. <laughs> she preferred that to when I was um, shooting more rough and tumble assignments. I think she was worried about my safety. And my dad, I think, uh, I think he was proud of me. Um, I think they didn't fully understand kind of what went into being a photographer. You know, they didn't fully grasp what you did to actually then end up getting a picture in the paper. When my mom died, she, uh, she had a desk and um, she had these filing cabinets and in the top drawer of the filing cabinet, she cut out every single picture that I had taken for the LA Times um, for the five years I was working there before she passed away. And, and that for me was a huge um, sort of piece of validation, you know, that she, I mean, she rigorously scoured the paper every day. So I knew she was proud, even though she, she wanted to keep me safe, so. I was part of the LA Times uh, photography staff, those of us who were shooting during the riots, but we won the Pulitzer Prize for the riot coverage. Uh, actually, specifically for a five-part section that came out after the riots, which was understanding the riots. And actually, one of my pictures was the lead picture on the first section and then I had a couple other pictures. So that was kind of a cool accolade. You know, the proof is in the pudding. You know, there it is on the front page of the LA Times, so.